So the 5W1H is the, today, when we look into the Malaysian education system, all right, it's quite unique as compared to other countries, even in the region. So this is the Malaysian education kind of scenario I just want to bring up. Most important is the well-rounded education they have to have more beyond their results that they obtain. So with that, so these are the gap year that the students can get involved, which I often encourage them. So that the no next question that we want to ask is that, and why we need to send our kids for pre u I'll share with you about this K-12 education system and why is that so important? Because in all the university in the world, most of them, they require this K-12 system in order for the students to enroll into the university. So sorry to say that if your kids leave the school after SPM, or even a lot of you that send your kids to homeschool, international school, that they left the school after the O-levels, that is not a six years secondary school. So what are the options that these are quite common? However, there are some people who don't want to go into those systems that I told you. Then with the O-levels and SPM, that is quite common that nowadays the students will go into pre-U foundation or they jump straight into a diploma program. So the third is where to go and overseas or local. Uh, to me, I always encourage an SPM students to pursue their STPM and then if possible to get into a public university in Malaysia and then it's still recognized we should give an opportunity to our younger generation, our children to go abroad for at least a year, even after a degree in Malaysia, just travel abroad for one year of master. That's good enough. The popular countries that in the past, as you can see, that could be America, a bit of Canada, and then we move to UK, and then uh, islands getting popular a little bit now. European country is not so popular as now. Um, frankly speaking, most of the students from Malaysia will still go to two, two biggest countries, which is Australia and UK. So this is a 5C that as a parent, five considerations that you should look into, but cost is always number one now, all right? Then we will come to the last slide for that how expensive or how affordable that for our children to go overseas. As you can see from here that the highest, the, 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 the part-time job opportunity or even migration possibility that they are welcoming is actually Canada. Even though now any students who go to study in Canada with a two years of study program, just to share with you, Canadian government is giving out all these students a three years of work visa. And the opposite country is actually their neighbor, which is United States, Modern. US. Often that people want to ask me about the ranking university, but is that important? Come to the selections of the university, there are three things that students and even the parents must know that. First, the ranking. But for undergraduate students, frankly speaking, I would say just go to a recognized university, which is a public university or even accredited university, that is good enough. So what courses are the future career? And today I'd like to introduce to you that uh, Society 5.0 was actually initiated by the Japanese government. What is the job requirement? Of course, IT is still very important, but there are certain things that the computer cannot do, the robot cannot do. For example, language, psychology, all those kind of things that you will see that is actually becoming more important. The crucial things about today's Topic is tuition fees and the living expenses. This is uh, some information about cost comparisons among the different countries. Now, I often encourage people to go abroad, not only for the sake of getting a degree, they should be working part-time because uh, minimum wage rate in a lot of countries is pretty high. And also graduate salary is higher. A lot of countries, they encourage their students to stay back now to work for two, three years in the particular country before they return home, if they wish to return home. So going abroad to study is not just about a paper qualification, it's but about the experience, the exposure, and eventually for their career.